I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will take up triangular numbers. It is part 2 since we will discuss more about triangular numbers in relation with Pascal's triangle and binomial coefficients. So what are triangular numbers and how do we create them? Let's begin with, with a dot. So that is in this pattern we have got just one number and if I extend by creating two more under it we see kind of a triangle it has three dots and if I extend this so if I extend this further creating three more then we get a triangle with how many dots three plus three six now let's go to the fourth pattern so we already have the triangle with six dots now I will add four more right so next pattern is this so in this fashion you can extend your pattern right so how many dots do we have now the number of dots we have in the first pattern we have one dot and then we have three and then we have six and we added four so it becomes six plus four ten i mean let's make it ten in the fifth pattern what do you expect in the fifth pattern you expect 15 right so let me write down 15 I'll not make the fifth pattern here now can you tell me how many dots will be there on the nth pattern so we have to figure out a rule by which we can find how many dots will be there in the nth pattern now you can see that as you move the dots multiply kind of increase faster and in our part one we figured it out that the formula which could give you the number of dots in an nth pattern is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. You can verify this formula and then check. For example, in the first one it will be 1 times 2 divided by 2. In the second it is 2 times 3 divided by 2. In the third, it is 3 times 4 divided by 2. In the fourth, it is 4 times 5 divided by 2. And so on, right? Now we will see how these numbers are related with Pascal's triangle and binomial coefficients. So let's begin by creating uh, that triangle, Pascal's triangle. So as you know, we begin by 1 and uh, you extend this going downwards on the edges you get ones and in the center you get combination of these right or in between we add the previous two so we get one here two one plus one right and then similarly you can extend it forever right so we'll go uh, for five rows so let's so this is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 and 1. This is the third row when we get 3s, right? So most of my students in grade 11 are very much aware of this. And they are doing Pascal's triangle and they'll be doing binomial theorem. It's very valid for them. 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, 4 and 1. Uh, even otherwise, if you have not taken up that course, you could of course understand from the simplicity of this pattern and its creation, right? 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 10, 6 plus 4 is 10. You also see a symmetry, right? So even you don't have to count. Okay, let's extend to the sixth one also. I have some space here. So let me use this space. And we'll learn a bit more about it. Okay. So we have 1 here, 5 plus 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. What we observe here is that all the numbers in the second row, this is our, or I should say, second diagonal. All the numbers in second diagonal are triangular numbers or a part of triangular numbers, right? Uh, diagonals are counted like this is a zero diagonal, this is one and then second diagonal. 
as far as the row number is concerned this is uh, row 0 this is row 1 and that is the second row right. so so we start with the second row and second diagonal so if we look for binomial coefficients then this number can be written as 2c2 right so so if i write binomial coefficients i could write this number as 2c2 and the next number we maintain the second diagonal so so it is the third row now so it is 3c2 and then it is 4c2 this one will be 5c2 and then we go to 6c2 and so on correct so what we see from here is that these numbers could be written as binomial coefficients so the first number in the series is 2c2 so let me call this as 2c2 the next one is 3c2 then it is 4c2 5c2 and so on so the nth number will be nc2 right so uh, i should say n plus one i'm sorry because for the first it is 2c2 so one more right this is the this is the pattern one let me write pattern numbers so that we have direct correlation so this is number one this is number of patterns this is the second third and then we have fourth and then we're talking about nth correct so for four it is five one more so n plus one c2 okay uh, for some of you who haven't done binomial coefficients uh, uh, n plus one c2 means what okay let's extend this uh, rather let me give you what is n c2 let me give you what n c2 is n c2 is n factorial over 2 factorial times n minus 2 factorial right so that is n minus uh, I mean and that expands to uh, this is n factorial this one is n plus 1 factorial which will give you that okay, okay. anyway uh, so okay what is n factorial let me add that also sorry for this additions n factorial means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 so on so if I write like uh, this calculate uh, 4c2 for example if I have 4c2 then that really means it is 4 factorial over 2 factorial times 4 minus 2 factorial and 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 uh, 2 factorial means 2 times 1 4 minus 2 is also 2 factorial so it is 2 times 1 so you can see uh, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 cancels, we are left with 6, so 4c2 is 6, correct? So that is how you could actually calculate very easily these numbers. So now we know how to calculate these numbers using binomial coefficients and directly we can apply this formula and find the result. So, so let me write here n plus 1 c2 which will be n times n plus 1 divided by 2 okay as you can see 2 factorial cancels out right so 2 factorial remains kind of so that is how you are going to get your result so that's one part of it now we are going to explore more patterns so we have already found a general term for a triangular number and the general term the for the triangular number is let me write here n plus 1 c2 so that becomes a general term where n is the term number now there are so many interesting things to look into and that is when we add these numbers what do we get now if i add 1 and 3 1 plus 3 is 4 so what you get is 4 do you see that so so you see addition is this so when you add 2c2 3c2 right you come to the next row on diagonal correct so it is uh, that is how it grows right so so this is the fourth row and 4c3 you get do you get that that's a combination right if you add 1 3 and 6 you get 10 so you get 10 that's the relation so if you add these three numbers you get that so that gives you some of the series right so so we can see some of series 
very easily from this so that you can take as an additional exercise sum of series. So if I add these three, let's say the first four terms, what do I get? So that is what you can figure out. What you get here is that you move into the next diagonal, so that increases, and you move into the next row, right? So, so you get 63. That is what you get when you do addition of all the above, right? So you add all above, add series. Is that okay? So, so if that is the nth term, then what is the sum of the series? What is the sum of the series? So if that is the nth term, then sum of this series, I'm not writing this in details, but let me give you the formula here. You add this, you get n plus 2, c3. So n plus 2, c3 becomes the sum of the series uh, for n plus 1, c2, where n starts with 1, and of course it can go up to n, right? So that is the sum of the series you can see. So it's a very neat formula. Now, one more observation which I'll stop with. Uh, if you had just pre two terms, if you had two terms, what do you get? So we saw some of the series. Now, now we're looking into at consecutive terms. Consecutive terms. I should have written sum first anyway. So what is sum of consecutive terms in this series? Okay, so if I add 1 and 3, what do I get? So if I add 1 and 3, I get 4, right? If I add 3 and 6, I get 9. If I add 6 and 10, I get 16. 10 and 15 gives me 25. So what we also observe here is that if we add two consecutive terms, we get a perfect square, right? So, so let me mess this up a bit now. This is two square, right? And this one is three square. This one is four square and this is five square. So we can now see that if you add first and second term, you get two square second and third term, you get three square, right? Square of the term number you add to, right? So, so you get square of that number uh, by addition. So two square, three square, so numbers are four, six, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, and so on. So that is another very interesting series which can be generated from triangular numbers. And I hope this information helps you to create your own interesting patterns and understand and look for these pattern numbers relate to Pascal's triangle and thereby to binomial coefficients, right? So you can generalize this addition in terms of uh, NCR. Okay, that'd be very interesting. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, you liked it. Feel free to share it with your friends and subscribe to my videos. Thank you and all the best.